Today, I'm going to show you how to convert a normal boring bicycle into a nice electric bicycle for about $700, assuming you have all the tools already. Some tools are very specific, especially for removing the bottom bracket, this highlighted area right here. While most tools are very common, such as Allen wrenches, this full suspension bike is ridiculously light, around 25 pounds. With the added motor and battery of 16 pounds, we should get a total of about 41 pounds by the time we're done. Spoiler alert, it's 41 pounds when we're done. If you want something super fast with crazy long ranges, this video is not for you. If you want something dirt cheap and looks reasonably good, then this hyper bicycle from Walmart is more than good enough for about $400. It weighs like a tank though, about 70 pounds. That's a lot. My goal was something sleek, discreet, and lightweight. So yeah, it's that easy. Just add a motor and a battery to your favorite bicycle. For tools, let's start with a multi-tool. Part of the appeal is that it also includes the chain disconnect tool and portable. Even if you're not doing e-bike conversion on a daily basis, You'll probably need this multi-tool just in case you're in the middle of nowhere and need to do some quick repair. You'll need a set of metric Allen wrenches from the smallest to the biggest, which I think is about 8mm. Having the multi-tool kit is nice, but you'll need long Allen wrenches to go into some hard to reach places. This is totally optional, but having a repair stand is really nice to work on a bicycle or an e-bike. Trust me. Your back will thank you. Since working with the additional weight of a motor and battery, you need a beefy bicycle repair stand like this one. It's possible you will need a Dremel as well to cut off some metal. I know I did for this conversion and you'll see later on why. The main material we need is the motor and battery to power it. This is the Tungshen 500 watt motor that we'll be working on today. I got it from johnnynerdout.com. I'm not affiliated with him nor the company in any way. I heard the site is pretty good. Myself, I like to support the little guys whenever I can instead of Amazon. This is why I always appreciate you, the viewer, whenever you support my channel via subscribing and liking my videos or even Venmo. All the rumors are true about Johnny, by the way. Whenever I had questions, I email and he promptly answered. That's pretty good. On the website, you guys select some options. I chose the mechanical brake. The display is the color one and a 500 watt motor. For about $30 more, I could have gotten the 750 watts motor, but I would think that it would be bigger than the 500 watt, so that's not what I really want. Can someone please confirm if the 750 watt is bigger in size? Notice that this is a 48 volt motor, so we will need a 48 volt battery pack. For that, I got it from this store on AliExpress. I got the 7 amp hour battery that looks like a big water bottle. Within, there are Samsung lithium cells, or at least that's what I order, and I hope there are genuine Samsung batteries inside. If you want crazy long range, get this high long battery pack with almost twice the capacity for longer range and maybe even speed. But I find this hideous. Remember, part of my goal is being discreet. Now, here's one of the most annoying things about the battery and the motor. Their connectors might be different. On my battery, the connector is XT, while the Tungshin motor is Anderson. You'll need an adapter to go from Anderson to XT, as seen here. Otherwise, your battery will not connect to your motor. My battery from AliExpress was kind enough to include an XT connector that I can solder onto any motor. If you don't want to do any soldering, then get this adapter. I have no idea if the motor will work, and I did not want to do any soldering until I was sure the motor works fine. So I got the adapter. We'll need to disconnect the chain and reconnect. Quick links are great because you can reconnect the chain back again within two seconds. Finally, you'll need zip ties and wire wraps. As you're finishing up, you'll notice a bunch of wires all over the place. You'll definitely want them tucked away neatly for aesthetic reason as well as tripping hazard. While you're looking at zip tie, you might need these metal zip ties. They are super strong as you'll see later we need them to secure the motor to the frame. Finally, having a 3D printer would be nice. You'll see why and how I use my 3D printer later on to print some very simple parts. 
Let's start with removing the petals because we need to use them again. This 15 millimeter tool is for removing the petals, but I suppose any mechanic wrench will do. Special notes, spin counterclockwise to remove the left pedal. Once the pedals are removed, time to remove the crank. Use the 8 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the center bolt. Afterward, to actually separate the crank from the bike, you need a crank puller. It works by screwing into the crank, this little piece right here, and then spinning the longer arm to extract the crank away, this arm right here. You'll be left with the final piece, the bottom bracket. This seal bearing square taper bottom bracket tool will remove it. Special note, spin clockwise to remove the right side of the bottom bracket. I was very lucky there is a non-profit bike shop around the corner. They provided all the tools and showed me how to remove the bottom brackets. Yep, all free. We're back at my house with the bike on the repair stand. Pop the chain off by disconnecting one of the link using the chain tool remover. I forgot to show how, so let me share a link on how to disconnect the tool. By the way, this bike's rear cassette is 8 speed. How do you know? Just count these metal discs. I don't know what they're called, but it's important that you know how many because we'll need a quick connect link to reconnect the chain back later. The quick connect link I'm using is 8 speed. We don't need the front derailleur, so let's remove it. Mine is relatively easy, just one hex bolt holding it in position onto the frame. And here is a shifter on the handlebar. Of course, before removing the shifter, you need to remove the grip. Remove both grips while you're at it because we'll be installing a bunch of new stuff onto the handlebar. Let's go back to the bottom. Make sure nothing is there. Mine has some stuff as seen here. I have no idea what their purpose is, but they have to go. Otherwise, the motor won't slide into the bottom bracket. Before mounting the motor, let's take a quick look at the motor's package contents. On a motor, mine came with bolts already attached. You need to remove this lock ring and the three bolts. One, two, and three here. I highly recommend watching this official install guide from Tong Shen here to give you an overview. This is assuming you have a standard bicycle with the two triangles. My bike has no traditional triangles, so I ran into multiple issues. And hope watching this video helps you out. Slide the motor onto the bottom bracket and temporarily hold it in position using the lock ring. Otherwise, the motor might slide out and fall to the ground. Once you slide the motor in, verify that it is not hitting your frame here. Mine is definitely hitting the frame, so I 3D printed a spacer using PETG filament. PLA filament will probably melt over time. If you don't have a 3D printer, Johnny has some metal spacers for sale on his site. Now, let's secure the motor. If you don't secure, the motor will want to rotate away from the bike. Meaning, if you are on the left side of the bike, the motor will want to rotate clockwise. Slide the black metal piece in first, then secure it with the silver lock ring. No need to tighten at this time. The bolts that came with the kit does not work because they are too short for this bike. I went out and bought M5 screws that are 25 millimeter long. To fill in the gap, I just used nuts because the spacers included in the kit is not long enough. To tighten the lock ring, a tool is included in the kit, so let's rotate clockwise to tighten it. You might want to use the hammer to help you out on this one. Don't forget to tighten the two bolts as well. To prevent the bolts get loose by themselves, you should use Loctite. As for securing the motor here, you're supposed to use the included special bracket with the two big bolts. This bracket does not work for my bike as you can see. The bolt is not aligning with the hole at all. My solution is to use metal zip ties and then use a Dremel to cut off any excess. Taking a closer look at the motor, you'll notice three main cables. Connect this bundle to this cable. It is for controlling the motor, by the way. The slimmest of the cable is for the speed sensor, and finally, the last cable goes to the battery. 
By the way, it is not possible to connect cables to their wrong counterpart. At least, I don't think it's possible. You basically connect squares to squares and circle to circles, and some are even color coded. Let's do the easiest one first, the speed sensor. It's supposed to wrap around the tube and secure via zip tie. My tube is way too big. I ended up removing the plastic piece. There is only one screw holding this plastic tube adapter. And then I secure a sensor with three zip ties. I can show you that in a bit. For the sensor to work properly, you need a magnet installed on a spoke. Pick the spoke that is nearest to the sensor and then screw the magnet in. Make sure that the magnet is aligned with the arrow on the sensor. If the magnet falls away or misaligned, then the throttle will not work. You can still pedal, of course. Next, we're going to connect the controller's cable. It's the only one with the most number of pins. Right now, I'm just playing around on how to hide the cables. I must have used 100 zip ties by using them and then cutting them again and again to make sure all of the cables are tidy. I'm very lucky that this bike has a small triangle to put all the cables within. And you'll see later on, I 3D printed a cover to completely hide everything. The controller cable splits out into four for the throttle, display with on and off button, left and right brakes. You can see how zip ties and wire wrap really helps with making things nice and neat. The cables are color coded to prevent any mix up. The display grip was way too big for my handlebar, so that's why it's sagging. It can't hold onto my handlebar. 3D printing is very helpful here, as you can see. This is just some spacers that I printed. I actually don't like how the display is sticking out. I ended up 3D printing something else to hold the display in place and you'll see near the end. You won't be using your old brakes. The new brakes have a wire to send a signal to tell the motor to stop. It's a safety feature, I guess, because I can't see myself pedaling and pressing the brakes at the same time. I forgot to show how to remove the old brakes, but here's the new brake on, securing it down with an Allen wrench. Pop the brake cable into the sockets and route it along this um, open slit. To reinstall the crank, let's start with the left, which is labeled L somewhere. Press it in using an Allen wrench, spin clockwise to tighten. The same method works for the right side. Next, let's install the left pedal. If you spin clockwise, it will not work as I'm doing here. It's actually counterclockwise to go in. On the other side, rotate clockwise to get the right pedal in. Go ahead and give the pedals a spin. Verify no cables or anything gets in the way. Now, we need to get the chain back on. If you use the chain breaker earlier, you should end up something like this. If you don't, then you only pop only one pin. So make sure you end up with something like this, and then we'll use the quick link to connect the chain back. I don't know what this piece is called right here, but I'm going to call it the inner, and then the bigger one, the thicker one, I'm going to call it the outer. Here's the quick link that will join the two inner pieces together. The quick link is the outer piece. My whole chain is on the ground now, so I won't connect it until it is on the bike. I did not make a video because I think it's pretty uh, self explanatory Alright, let's do a final walkthrough before connecting the battery. Starting with the back, you got the uh, speed sensor. I used three zip ties to secure that. Battery is connected to the motor using an XT to Anderson adapter. The controller cable is routed to the front. It splits into four, two to the left, two to the right side. I place my throttle on the left side. I think most people do it on the right side though. The brakes are looking good. If they're not, fix it accordingly.
The display is much lower on the handlebar and the on and off button is next to the display. I think most people mount it on the uh, left side, but I prefer on the right side. There are two metal zip ties holding the motor in place. Additionally, I 3D printed a piece that sits between the motor and a battery. With no gap, there's no way for the motor to rotate clockwise away. Here's a close-up of why I moved the uh, display back further towards the seat. Whenever I need to do a quick repair, I flip the bike over. If the display was installed as the manufacturer wanted, it would hit the pavement first. And that's exactly what happened too, by the way. Part of my display is all scratch up now. Unbelievable. Here's a comparison of the battery unit next to a uh, bottle of water. On the top, there's a rubber piece to protect it from the elements like dirt. I'm not sure if it's water resistant, and I don't intend ever riding this bike in the rain. Within, there's the uh, power plug to charge it up with the included wall charger, USB to charge your phone, a power switch to power up the bike, The bottle cage sits on this side of my frame. Two screws are holding the plastic case in place. I don't have much confidence in the cage at all, but luckily two thick Velcro ties are included with the battery kit. On the right side, there is a keyhole to secure the battery, but that does not work for me because the motor is covering up that hole. Even though I won't be using the included two keys to lock up the battery onto the case, I will save them just in case I need in the future for another e-bike conversion. You never know. Strangely, there are no manuals for the display in the package. When you first turn on, you get kilometer per hour. Here's a screenshot of the manual that I got from Johnny's website. To go into settings, press and hold to power up the bike and display. If the display does not turn on, verify you flip the on switch on the battery pack. Press the question mark and the power button together for about 3 seconds. The first page is wheel size, mine is already 26. Press the plus button to go to the second page. I'm going to assume this is the max speed. I doubt mine can hit this high. The max I've ever seen is 23 km per hour. Press the plus button to go to the third page. Press the question mark to enable changing the unit. Press the minus button to change the unit to whatever you want and press the question mark again to confirm. Press plus to go to the next page. I have no idea what pages 4 through 7 are. If you do know, please type in the comment section. This motor is ridiculously quiet. You hardly notice it is on. All you really hear is the tire against the pavement or dirt. It's crazy quiet. Remember, this is the 500 watt motor. No idea if the 750 watt is louder or not. Can someone please verify and let us know in the comment section as well? All right, hopefully this video helps you on how to convert a normal bike into an e-bike. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.